Hi everybody, I'm Ole and you're watching Boat Late Astro. So you might wonder why I'm standing in front of the mirror at the introduction today, but today's video is all about reflecting telescopes or reflectors. And what do those have in common? Well, they are made up of mirrors. They are built up like uh, pretty similar to each other with a primary mirror at the end and a secondary mirror in the front. Uh, today's video is going to give you some insight on uh, what to expect from a reflector telescope. Uh, hopefully you will be able uh, to uh, grab some knowledge of how they work and what you can expect of them and if they are somewhat beginner friendly or not. So by the end of this video, if you're considering buying a reflecting telescope, then hopefully I have uh, made your mind uh, a little bit easier to take a decision on what to buy. So the main idea of this video is uh, to give you guys uh, some uh, knowledge on how the reflector telescope works. Uh, the three main uh, builds of telescopes that's out there uh, and what they are good for and not so good for. We have three, call them subcategories of reflecting telescopes. Uh, one of these is actually not a straight or a pure reflecting telescope. It's a catadioptric uh, telescope. It's the SCT or the Schmidt Cassegrain. We have a Ricci Cretien or the RC telescope. Uh, and we have the Newtonian. Uh, so we're going to go into details about those three types and give you guys some pros and cons about them. The Newtonian is the simplest form of a reflector telescope. Light enters through the front passes down to a parabolic, a curved mirror, then bounces back to a secondary mirror, angled at 45 degrees, and finally, out of the tube into an eyepiece or the camera. Some pros for this telescope type is uh, it's good for beginners looking for a low-cost telescope with a large aperture. The fast focal ratio means that you will gather more light in a shorter exposure time. Uh, and it's much less uh, expensive than other telescopes for deep sky astrophotography. Some of the cons about this one is that you need a coma corrector. It's added cost for uh, serious imaging. Requires uh, frequent uh, maintenance in the form of collimation and cleaning the mirrors. And it's larger and heavier than refractors, so you would require a better mount as well. The Ritchey Cretien telescope is a variant of the Cassegrain telescope. This telescope uses hyperbolic mirrors both in the front and the back, which makes them more expensive than other reflectors of equivalent aperture. This lends to increased optical performance as coma is nearly eliminated, but instead means they suffer from another aberration called astigmatism, which appears as the stars have wings uh, if you're looking at the corners. These telescopes are excellent for serious deep sky astrophotography. The folded optics makes them compact and lightweight in design, and they are affected by very few aberration, making it great for research. The cons of these are that they are not recommended for visual, uh, because they have a large central obstruction. Even though they are coma free, you still will need a field flattener as you have some field curvature, and they can be expensive for good quality compared to the others. Both the Newtonian and RC telescopes will give you these diffraction spikes as you can see on the stars because of the spider veins in front. The Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is a catadioptric telescope combining refraction and reflecting elements. A Schmidt correcting plate in front of the telescope corrects for most types of optical aberration resulting in a cleaner image overall. It's a highly popular design with consumers as it features a long focal length, usually around 1500 millimeters or more, and a focal ratio, usually around f10, which makes it a great choice for planetary lunar viewing and imaging. SCTs features a folded optical design which allows for a long focal length in a lightweight and compact package. 
It's highly versatile, especially if you combine it with a focal reducer for deep sky imaging. It can be pricey if you compare it to reflectors of the same aperture. The long native focal length means narrower field of view and require more from your guiding. And the secondary obstruction gives less contrast and collimation can be a bit difficult. There will be no diffraction spikes on your stars when using an SCT. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, and of course, if you have any tips or something you want to discuss in the comment section, leave them in the comment section below. So yeah, that's all. I wish you all clear skies. Keep looking up. I'm Olen, and you've been watching Boat Light Astro. Thanks for watching.